Like every day, right? Big news for you fighting fans. I, I don't know, man. I'm bummed. I was really looking forward to Mike Tyson and, and Jake Paul going at it. You were going to go. you really rock? Yeah, I already booked my flight to Dallas. Yeah. You're all into that, huh? No, I would never. I oh, won't even watch hey. it. Hey, I mean, my goodness. He's there. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that's one of those things you think, okay. But you're just curious to see how Tyson would do. But you No, you're not. It's, uh, Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fights a joke. Oh, my. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. It is. Joining us now, I don't know if he, I think he would do pretty well in a, in a, in a boxing match against uh, Mike Tyson. That is the great James Jones, Super Bowl, uh, Packers Super Bowl champion receiver, joins us now, part of FS1. Uh how would you think you would do? How, how many rounds do you think you'd go with the, with a 50-year-old-plus Mike Tyson? 57. 57, yeah. Oh, man. Number one, I would never want to get in the ring with Mike anyway. But if I do want to get in the ring with Mike, I want to do it at 57 because I think I will give Mike Tyson everything he wanted. <laughs> at 57 years old, I'm winning that fight. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> I won't be one of the ones. I won't be one of the ones tuned in for Jake Paul, Mike. Yeah. Me oh, neither. Man. Yeah. James, uh, we all week have been really kind of having some fun conversations about uh, these teams that are paying these wide receivers, not just one on the team, but in a lot of cases, two and maybe even three. These huge amount of dollars, like Miami, you know, one hundred fifty million dollar, one hundred fifty million in guaranteed money, um, kind of the same kind of money you made when you were playing, right? Same, same kind of level. Man, hey, I love you. I love you guys with all my heart, man. But if I made that type of money, man, it'd be hard for y'all to catch me, man. I thought it was the time. I mean, you know, I'll be, I'll be long gone, man. But seriously, James, when it comes to this, uh, it just seems I could it catch up to these teams at all, or, or is this going to be this is the well, wave I mean, now? Got, I think we have to understand, man. We are leaning towards going to a offensive league. That is where we are going. You look at all the rules of already how the quarterbacks protected. You look at all the rules of how you have to hit certain guys. You look at all the rules when you talk about how you got to cover certain guys and all that type of stuff. I mean, the pass and the fairness, you barely could touch a guy. It's extremely hard to play defense in this league right now. So a lot of these teams understand, like, it's not going to be us really stopping teams and holding them to 12 points like the Ray Lewis's defense or the Legion of Boom defenses was. This is going to be games that are going to be high scored, and when the game is on the line, I need big-time offensive players to make plays. So I think that is why you're seeing two receivers on one team get treated like they're number one wide receivers because you know our league is going to an offensive game. Hey James, when you look at the numbers and you look at the comps, okay, the guys that are receiving this money, the guys that have yet to receive the money, think of Jamar Chase in Cincinnati. I think of Brandon Ayuk in San Francisco. Are, are they actually comparable with each other, or is one more deserving than the other? How, how do you kind of lay it all out when you look at them all on the same page and the kind of money? Let's just say on a per-average yearly basis. Yeah, well, they're not all on the same page. Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson is in a totally different league than anybody else. And then it goes to the C.D. Lamb. I think C.D. Lamb has is, is earned the uh, A.J. Brown money, $32 million a year. I think he's, he's earned that. Um, but when you talk about Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, those are two of the best players on their football team that we all view as arguably the one and two best receiver in the National Football League. So they are going to be the highest paid. When I talk about a Brandon Ayuk, I put a Brandon Ayuk in the Devontae Smith category, in a, um, you know, Nico Collins category. Um, I really don't even put him in the Jaden Waddle category when you talk about what Jalen Waddle has done in this league. I mean, Jalen Waddle is three back-to-back thousand-yard seasons you know since he came in you know after being a, a first round pick not in a Cal Shanahan offense you know so I think AJ Brown Justin Jefferson a totally different league and then I think the league goes to the to the CD Lamb league and then after that it goes to the Brandon Ayuk and 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 the T Higgins you know type league I feel, I feel like those players are saying to get around 25 million a year mm-hmm. in the T Higgins and um 
and uh, Brandon Ayuk, and then C.D. Lamb will be thirty-two million, and Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson thirty-five, thirty-six million per year. Well, James, where do you put Tyreek Hill? Where, where do you, what 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 area that of those divisions would you put him? Because he was kind of hinting well, at thanks, maybe well, maybe thanks. doing that. Yeah, well, thank the Lord Jesus that Tyreek Hill is not up for no conversation because he is in the conversation with Justin Jefferson and uh, Jamar Chase, period. So, you know, whatever they're making, he needs to be making, if not more. They're that type game changers for their team. You've seen the way Tua looked when Tua got Tyreek Hill. You've seen the way Joe Burrow looked when Joe Burrow got Jamar Chase. You've seen the way just, um, Justin Jefferson made Kirk Cousins look. So, those three dudes are in a league of their own with just being special at the wide receiver position and whatever they money they want, they should get, and they should be the highest paid receivers in the league. James Jones joining us here, Rocket Manooch, Jimmy B, Fox Sports 910. So if you're a general manager and you're starting a franchise and they, you know, it's one of those deals where you get to pull a player from any team, what wide receiver would you start your team with? You can have any of them. But, and, and know that you already got a good quarterback. You got a guy that can throw. So you, you're going to be fine with that. That's not an issue. But the, who would be your go-to guy right now? Money doesn't matter. Devontae Adams. Really? Devontae Adams is still my number one wide receiver in the National Football League. Okay. And I'm not a guy that, that's worried about worried about speed, but for me, it will be Devontae Adams. I feel like he's every quarterback's best friend. The Three minutes. He can separate um, and create separation immediately and show the quarterback that he's open. That's why even with him playing with Aiden O'Connell, he had a 1,000 yards uh, and Jimmy Garoppolo because he's that type of receiver. And then after that, I will go Justin Jefferson, and then after that, I will go Tyreek Hill. And then I will go Jamar Chase. Where's Debo Samuel fit for you? To be honest with you, Debo Samuel as a receiver playing the receiver position, he's not high on my list. Okay. Now, if you ask me who's the best who's the who's the best playmaker in the National Football League, Debo Samuels would be my number one or two. But when I talk about receiver play, who, who I want my quarterback to throw to, Debo Samuels won't be high on my list. But when I talk about who I want to throw these screens to and hand the ball off to and a playmaker on my team and ball in his hands, a very tough tackle, Debo Samuel will be up there. But strictly playing the receiver spot and receiver position, I don't have Debo Samuel's high, high on my list. And, James, when you watch Marvin Harrison Jr. in college, and a lot of guys get a chance, fans probably get a chance to see him play as much as, as we did, um, who would his game remind you of for a lot of the Cardinal fans hoping to see some of that same type of receiver. Anybody in particular? To be honest with you, he, he reminds me of a more explosive Mike Evans. Okay. Really good body control, you know, can go up and make the tough catch consistently, but has a little bit more top end speed to, you know, make the yards after the catch, you know. But when I watch him play route running wise and all that, he reminds me of a, a, of a you know, faster Mike Evans. And, I know a lot of people, you know, maybe like, what, Mike Evans? Mike Evans has never seen nothing less than a 1,000 yards in 10 straight seasons. So I'm sure if the Cardinals can get what Mike Evans has done, that will be a big-time hit on the first-round pick that they have out there in uh, in, in Maserati Mar. So that's mm -hmm. my confidence right now, more explosive Mike Evans. James Jones, Gunterson. California high school. Oh, a grizzly bear, grizzly yep. bear. Is that what you guys were? Yep, yep. Was that it grizzly? Grizzlies, what is it with the, in California? You know, it's the Stanford, the Cardinal, not the Cardinals, but the Cardinal. Yeah. Is it? Is was it grizzly bear or grizzly bears? No, it's just grizzlies, man. Gunners and grizzlies, man. No grizzly bears <laughs> attached to it. Grizzly bear kind of make it sound a little softer. Yeah. It's just grizzly. <laughs> James, thanks for the time, man. Have a great weekend, man. Appreciate you. Not a problem. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> James Jones joining us. Of course, Super Bowl champion with the Packers. Also played for the Raiders. Spent some time with the Giants and Chargers on their uh, offseason and practice squads. But, uh, yeah, Gunterson. Gunter that was his high school. The then Grizzlies. went on to San Jose State. Yeah, the Grizzlies rock. The I, Grizzly. I, I, yeah, well, you know, I looked it up as we were talking here, and it said Grizzly Bear. And it kind of always reminds me of, like, I used to get schooled by my RA my freshman year in, in, in college. 
because they were my two guys. They were their RAs, they're big sports guys, and they knew I was in the going. I was yeah. in school to be in sports, and they would always drill me on mascots. And the one that I always kept getting wrong, I don't know why I didn't get it after the first time, was the Stanford Cardinal. This is the Cardinal tree. It's or the Cardinal, yeah, the Cardinal, not yeah. the Cardinals. The Cardinal you know, it's the Cardinal. Yeah, you know, it's singular Cardinal. Yeah. That's it. How about that Devontae Adams? That's his guy. Yeah, I didn't see that coming Not either. I mean, but I should have asked Playmaker because I was, you know, I would start team with, uh, with with Tebow with Debo, sure. uh, Samuel. That's why I would start team. Yeah. But I didn't ask the question right. I should have asked Playmaker, not wide receiver. But uh, he broke that. Hey, um, are we gonna try to squeeze in a couple uh, Seinfeld honorable sure. mentions?